Welcome to Bonnie's Beat. I'm your host, Bonnie Squires. We're coming to you from Radnor Studio 21 in beautiful downtown Wayne. And as always, we'd like to let you know what's happening in the world of politics, academia, charities, anything that impacts your life. And there are two people here today who certainly impacted my life recently. We've got Buzzy Miller and his wife, Judy Goldstein, who are the owners of Buzzy's Bow Wow Meow, where I adopted my two brand new, delicious, wonderful kitty cats, Honey Boy and Cutie Pie. And they also have a nonprofit called PACT. Tell us what PACT stands for, Buzzy. PACT stands for People Slash Animals Companions Together. And the whole purpose of PACT is to have people and animals share their lives together where both can benefit. We're different than any organization probably in the country where we're not just a rescue foster organization for animals. Our work enhances the lives of human beings. We have reading programs for kids. We have foster programs for the military going overseas that have nowhere to leave their animals. We have foster programs for places like Ronald McDonald homes. Uh, we have a spay-neuter concept that we're just having the planning stage now. But everything we do not only hopefully saves the life of a companion animal, mostly cats and dogs, but also other companion animals, but we enhance the life of a human being mentally and physically. That's the whole purpose of the organization. Now, it's important to know that Buzzy Miller and I went to high school together, but I hadn't seen him in a long time because he was a very successful real estate business lawyer in Manhattan for how many years? Well, I was in Manhattan for a few years. Then I came back here for about 30, 35 years doing that. And nine, 10 years ago, I decided I was comfortable. I wasn't super rich. but I make a living. <laughs> I, I wanted to put more meaning in my life. And this, I'm changing, I'm, we're doing a difference. I did business law and I had comfortable to rich clients. And I wasn't changing lives in what I was doing. They were making more money. I made a good living, but I wasn't doing anything to leave an impression on the world. Now we've adopted out primarily Judy's help over a thousand animals. And we run this special kitty palooza that Judy will talk about all the time. We started with four animals a year and a half ago in our foster program in 2011. We did 50 Well, wait, wait, hold it on the foster okay. program. Judy. Yes? You've been married to this crazy man, what, 25 years now? A little over 20. 20 years. You deserve a medal about this high. Uh, no, a medal <laughs> this high. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> but, but he You know was, how they always say opposites attract. <laughs> but he was... An attorney when you first met him, right? He was my attorney. Actually, we did business together in my company because I have a real estate uh, management company. What's the name of your company? It's called Metropolitan Management Corporation. Oh, that's right. You and, and, we, and Scott Fagan, my partner, we have apartment buildings and shopping centers that we manage. And uh, we have a, a nice portfolio all over this area and a little bit of southern New Jersey and a few in Bucks County. Well, how did you find Buzzy Miller as your, I mean. Buzz used to bring uh, clients together with us. We would do the property management and we would do, develop the uh, But how did you find estate. him initially? He was the attorney who brought the clients Oh, he to found us. you. He found me. Oh. Well, actually, well, we found Mike him. Espel. Well, yeah, we, we, had, mutual, a, we had a mutual, mutual person, client. We had a mutual a, a client. A person who was both a lawyer and real and, estate uh, developer. I went to him with Mike yeah. Espel's wife, right. Dr. Susha. 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 Yes, right. exactly. Right. Well, it's a small and, world. Well, Michael and I did a lot of things together. Michael represented her company to me, and, you know, they the needed a lawyer history. to help and them. And you took one look at her. And the rest is his. And it was years before we really, you know, we got together as a boyfriend. Well, we were buddies for we were, years. We were buddies for many years before we um, became attached. I was even attached. wilder and crazier in those right. days. So <laughs> That's it, hard to believe. After, she, <laughs> went, after <laughs> she went through her first marriage, she said she didn't want to deal with a wild, crazy guy in his 30s and 40s. Right. She said she couldn't take it. She'd be my friend. Right. <laughs> So we were buddies. We go places together as brother and sister. Right. Very similar to what happened. And he, and he would take my son. Sally, he would take my son. There was a famous scene in there. Right. We reenacted that scene <laughs> in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, that's funny. It but is. you must have always been a pet lover, Judy. Um, I was always a, a cat lover. I never had a dog until Buzz and I got married, and that was by accident. It was let actually a let dog. Let me tell you a funny story, because I was always a dog person. She was a cat person. And we knew each other for about eight <laughs> years, and I was at her son's bar mitzvah seven years before this, but in 1989, 
she got an SUV, and I was thinking of getting one, and they weren't that popular then. And we were buddies, so I said, can I borrow your SUV? So I left my corridor house in the suburbs. I live in Center City, and I had my three dogs because I had tons of friends in the suburbs. So I'd take them out. My parents were both alive then. I took the dogs out to her house. Uh, she said she didn't want the dogs in the car. I said, well, can I leave them in your house? Because what am I going to do with them? I left them in the house. I came back a lot longer than I thought because... She's like the German trains, always on time. I'm never on time. So I came back a lot later because I went to visit a lot of people, including my parents. And I walk in the house, and she's on her hands and knees cleaning up the carpets. And my dogs were in their house for eight hours, and they had accidents. So I'm looking at her, and I say, she's been my sister, my buddy for eight years. But, you know, she's adorable. She's sweet. She's bright. She cleans up after the dogs. And she even loves my dogs. I said, you know, my dogs were my wife. I had three of them. They slept in the bed then. So anyway, they're all in heaven now. So I said, hey, maybe I should look at Judy other than a sister as maybe somebody to date. So one thing led to another, and that's, that was 24 years ago. Well, he chased me all these years <coughs> until I caught him. How's that one? But when did you start Buzzy's Bow Wow Meow? which is in Narberth, which is right. this phenomenal, it's like Bloomingdale's for pets. That's the only way to describe it. Well, it was actually an accident, you know, you know how things happen. Um, another tenant was coming into real estate that we were managing and owned, um, and it was the, used to be the market at Albrecht's. Sure, which was Albrecht's, the, that which gorgeous was the Art gourmet, Deco. Yeah, the gourmet market. And... Um, Trader Joe's had opened up and Whole Foods, and it got to the point where uh, it wasn't doing well with the, the different vendors that were in there, and it was time to close. And we had uh, a pet store look at it with the understanding that they might be interested in opening up there. And one thing led to another, and at first they wanted to do it, and they had another location. And to make a long story short, they decided they're staying in one store and they're not opening a second store. So I come home one day, and he's always been an animal lover and um, was doing a little bit of his nonprofit work without having packed, but doing things, dabbling in rescuing animals. And I said to him, I have a great idea for you. Why don't you open up a pet store there and call it, you know, Buzzy's and have a, a store, and you can do all your nonprofit work, and it would be perfect for you. You can adopt out animals, big store. And uh, that's how we got started with Buzzy's. And he said, oh, this is terrific. And that changed his life, actually. Can I actually. clarify one thing? Yes. Uh, I have been rescuing animals for about 30 years. So we opened oh a store goodness. about six years ago. So I've been doing it for 24 years. I relinquished my business career about nine, ten years ago. And I worked with all the shelters, if you name them. I've done work with them for free for a couple of years. I didn't feel I was making a difference. The main reason I... Animal I, shelters. Yeah, animal shelters for Delaware County... Chester County, Montgomery County, the SPCA, you name the major ones. I was doing all kinds of things, volunteering any way my past skills could help them. Uh, the point was I learned one thing about the industry that I still feel today. The general public, even if a guy has six degrees from Harvard or MIT, or did, Penn, or Penn <laughs> didn't have the ability easily to find out how to find a good vet, what to look for, to find out what were good foods, to realize the puppy mills were horrible places, to realize that not every pit bull is going to eat your kids. So I realized this after doing rescue adoption, working with the shelters for 24 years. So I made up a list of about 40 topics, including pet bereavement, because I did a lot of that for free. I did it with the University of Pennsylvania, did it with other vet offices, and I volunteered to help people cope with it. So I, I found 40 It is like losing a family it member. Is. It is. Because I just went through it, it when it, our 16-year-old Smokey, you know, went to heaven through the auspices of the Pen University of Pennsylvania Veterinary Hospital. But there was nothing else that could be done. And we loved him so. And my husband and I just moped and sat around for a few weeks until I accidentally took a wrong turn and stopped at the light at Montgomery Avenue and Meeting House Lane and saw the sign that said, Buzzies, Bow Wow Meow, Kitty Palooza this Saturday. So I called right away. I said, what means a Kitty Palooza? <laughs> Excuse me. And whoever answered the phone explained to me 
that you allowed shelters and something called, what's the Animal Care? Act, it's uh, a Act, the Animal ACCT Care Control. ACCT is the, the letters, which is Animal uh, Control. Care and Control. For, uh, they're the Animal Collection Service in the city of Philadelphia. If a dog's running loose, they're the ones that pick it up, and that's where they go to. But and they brought four little kittens a couple right. Saturdays ago. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I got there early because whoever answered the phone so, said, so come early. Get there, right. Right. We came at 10.15. It was called for 11 o'clock. It was, it was swarming with people. Mm -hmm. It was Mob City. Right. So I grabbed a volunteer and I said, we want those two. And I hadn't planned to go home with kittens. I didn't think I was ready for it yet. My husband was ready because he was moping, you know, and he right. needed the kittens. And while I was signing the adoption papers, because you had to fill out like your life story, mm -hmm. two pages, what happens if the cat gets sick? What vet do you use? Did you ever have, you know, cats before? How old were they? What did they die from? And so on. I mean, two full pages. And while I'm filling it out, some guy comes in, and he's holding my honey boy. I run over so fast, and I said, that's my kitten. That's and right. Says I a saw you doing one. that. <laughs> and the volunteer says, well, everybody came at the same time. Right. I said, not true. We got here 20 minutes ahead of them. Right. And the guy was very nice, and he gave me back my kitten. He knew that you were, you know, <laughs> you were already the mom of those two. Oh, absolutely. Right. And, you know, before you said they're like family, they are family. They are family. Okay. And anybody will tell you that. Animals today are members of their family. They celebrate their birthdays. God forbid when they go to heaven, everybody mourns the same way. And, That's right. you know, and they're included in everything you do. My well, kids wouldn't go on vacation unless their dog could come with them. Well, the, the interesting thing is when you go to Buzzy's Bow Wow Meow, my husband happened to notice and picked it up. There was a little outfit it was like a tuxedo and bow tie mm -hmm. for a dog to wear at somebody's wedding. Right. We laughed, so we got such a kick. Absolutely. But I bet there are people who do that. Oh, absolutely. Have the dog absolutely. Down we, were, we were at a New York wedding where everything was donated, and the net proceeds went to one of the major New York shelters. And, in fact, it's going to be on TV. I forget what station. Monday night. Monday night at 10 o'clock. The Cake Boss. The TV it's, it's the Cake Boss on TLC. The Cake Boss. The yeah, Cake Boss on at 10 TLC. At uh, 10 o'clock throughout the nation, we... I'm friendly with the girl because she does a lot for animal shelters in New York. So she and I have been friendly for years. She had donated over 150000 It was in, uh, what was the hotel? It was, right it was in the Essex. Essex House. The Essex House. Right. Yeah. Fancy hotel. That's what it I'm was saying. the most unbelievable it, it, it was, affair. You never saw anything like it, it for animals. It was as fancy as the fanciest wedding we've ever been to. I mean, we've been to some weddings that are super fancy and some that are not super fancy. This was as though two wealthy people got married. Everything was drop dead gorgeous from the flowers to the food. And what, were they marrying off dogs? They two were dogs. marrying two dogs. <laughs> they were her marrying dog her and dog a, and, and the winner. They had a contest. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one who got the most votes. votes. And a doctor who I runs a fantastic uh, veterinary clinic in what state Richmond, was that? In Richmond, Richmond Virginia. Virginia. His poodle won. And they do low cost operations for people who cannot afford work. it. They're a wonderful husband and wife veterinary team. And their dog was all tie-dyed. You had to see this. <laughs> Big, white, standard poodle married a dog that weighed about five pounds. I love it. But and if it was anybody beautiful. wants to watch it, uh, you know, it oh, was for a nonprofit. It's this Monday night, 10 o'clock on TLC. Oh, is that cute? It's coming Monday, I'm February sure, 4th. I'm sure it'll, it'll run a, a, few, a few times. It probably it'll run will. a few times. Oh, yeah, it'll times. run many times. But when is your next Kitty Palooza? My That's next important. Kitty Palooza is on February 23rd, which is a Saturday. We always run them from 11 to 3. And the most terrific part is that fosters bring their babies. They've been fostering usually for 8 to 10 weeks. A foster is somebody who takes in a stray cat or is a now stray No, the fosters... Dog. What they do is they save lives because if they don't pull an animal to foster it in their home, and that's the important thing that you need to get out there, the more people who volunteer to foster, the less animals get euthanized because the fosters can only hold X amount of cats and X amount of dogs. If they have 100 cages, that's it. If they have 110, 10 of them have to be euthanized if Ooh. they're not adopted. So cats over dogs get euthanized more often because they have so many more kittens and everybody wants a puppy. But the kittens, as I was telling you before we started the show, they can have litters a couple of times a year over and over again. So when they come in in the boxes to these shelters and they have no place to put them, unfortunately, they have to do the next, which is put them down. 
mm. or euthanize them, as they call it. Mm. Mm. I, mm. I don't like anything that has to do with taking healthy, innocent animals and putting them down. So to me, it's very important that we adopt out of the store seven days a week, which we do. We have two cat rooms, and we always have cats available. But when we have Kitty Palooza, we give the fosters the opportunity to show the cats that they've been fostering and nurturing for all that time. And the wonderful thing about a foster animal over an animal that comes out of a shelter is they have so much socialization, TLC, that when you come to meet them, they're not your typical skittish cat that seems like they're nuts. Cats don't do well in strange surroundings like a dog does. Dogs, from the minute they're born, they're always... <laughs> and you know, they're ready to go with you. I don't you. know if I agree. I mean, they that. really that's do. But subject. cats are scared She's to death. Cat cats are scared to death if they aren't socialized. And that's why there's so many feral cats out there. Because if they're born on the outside, they really almost impossible to get them to be domesticated. Yes. They have to be born, they have to be nurtured, and then they're ready to go with everyone. Like you say, your cats are so trusting. That's because they came out of a foster environment. Well, they think I'm their mommy. Well, you are their mommy. <laughs> you are, their, you mommy. are their mommy. And they're nuzzling my neck and my hair. And you know, and I think that when an animal is adopted, they know the difference, and they're even more grateful than if they were purchased someplace. We always say, never buy, adopt. There's so many animals out there. Unfortunately, the numbers, the statistics, who knows how right they are, but they say a minimum of 4 million animals are euthanized in this country every oh. single just year, in shelters, and that's just in shelters. Oh. Who knows how many are, are never brought to a shelter to even try to adopt out. They're just euthanized the old-fashioned way, right. and they, it's just a horrible thing. And that thing. number used to and be the, 10 And the animals that run the streets, when you're driving, ago. you see animals on the roadways that have been hit by cars. They don't deserve that kind of treatment. They all want a loving home. They're all wonderful pets. They're all appreciative. And the average cat lives an average age of 14 years, and lots of them live a lot longer than that. We've had so to have an animal, to be 18, exactly, 19. to have an animal, you know, that's with you for all that time, and loyal and loving, and loving and waiting for you when you come home. And it's so easy to take care of a cat. You know, dogs need to be walked. You know, let's face it. If you take a cat and you take a dog and you look at what it costs to have a cat, what it takes in time to have a cat, they're so much easier to take care of. You take of. a kitten, you put it on the kitty litter. And that's it. It's you don't trained have to, you instantly. Don't, you don't have to put it there. It's like that's they're true. born. It's Can like, I raise it's my like hand a kangaroo. Instead of getting the wrong end of the stick, I'm like, between two women like that are kangaroo. cat maniacs, and I'm it's a like dog a kangaroo maniac. That's born and I don't get a chance to it's say It's like anything. a kangaroo that crawls out and crawls up to the pouch and gets in. As soon as a cat is born, they know to go in a litter box. They are fastidious animals. They really are. Can clean. I raise my hand no. and say two things? No. Sure. You mentioned the word pit bull earlier, and I know you have a special crusade to get rid of the stigma that now the, the pit bull suffers from. So tell us what you've done and why you think it's so important. Well, I truly believe there are two major problems where probably half the country, including people of all walks of life, highly educated people, people that aren't as educated, have a stigma against pit bulls. One is, unfortunately, the national media, I don't think has ever told the truth. Uh, because you watch TV at night, the first seven or eight shows are all murders, rapes, fires, buildings blowing up, not pre pretty things, but somehow that's what's showing. I guess that's what the American public likes, so they don't show pit bulls, which are also therapy dogs, canine dogs, etc. The other thing is that they are large, strong dogs, but so are German Shepherds, so are Rottweilers. They had the same stigma pit bulls have now, but I have dealt with hundreds of pit bulls that I have had. I fed them with my hands. I've been televised laying on the ground where they've been licking my face. I have friends that they sleep in the bed with their kids. If you are a caring, responsible family, any dog you have, especially when you get young, like with the kittens, will turn out it doesn't matter. It could be a pit bull, it could be a Rottweiler, it could be a Bichon, it could be a five-pound dog. The problem is that you have the dog fighters. The dog in vogue now is the pit bull. It could have been the uh, German Shepherd. It could have been other things. Oh, there were other dogs that were used for fighting before pit bulls well, not, were used? Fighting wasn't probably as prevalent or it came out as much as now. I mean, to answer your question, what do I do well, about it? Well, it's done it? in secret because it was always illegal. Well, it's still in secret now. It's yeah. still illegal. But there but were the, other breeds that used to, the hounds used to be, it, uh, you know, the dogs the that they used are, for fighting years ago. It was ago. the bloodhounds in the late uh, 
1800s. It was, and I don't know the sequence, but there was Dobermans that were, had the criticism of pit bulls. Dobermans, Rottweilers, and German Shepherds. And Rin Tin Tin repaired the image of German Shepherds. That's oh, how crazy it was. But okay. that was the media blowing him up and yeah. Hollywood making money. I'm not knocking capitalism. I spent 35 years of my life working within the capitalist <laughs> system. You know, so that's where I made a comfortable living that I could do what I do now for nothing. But what I've done is, I was mentioning before with the seminars, I at my age then, which was early 60s, wasn't really interested in a retail business. There are plenty of decent pet stores around. What I wanted to do was educate the public. So when I mentioned I drew up this list, I had about 40 subjects, and I said, I know a vet, I know a lawyer, I know a shelter, that they could come in and they're the expert. I'm basically... I don't want to You're use the this facilitator. Term. I'm the facilitator. I'm the Jay Leno or the Letterman. They get on an expert. It could be you in medicine. You look like David Letterman. Well, <laughs> I, I, the point is that... No, Jimmy Kimmel. All right. A little bit heavier. But they get on an expert <laughs> in that particular area. The thing is that I brought in experts, and we ran seminars continually. They were free in the store. We purchased 100 and some chairs. We have a sound system in there like you would have in a minor theater, we spent thousands of dollars. And I said to Judy, I'm not doing this at my age to make a few dollars or some money uh, with a pet store. I don't want to stay, I want to educate the public so we can rectify the misinformation. The fact that animals from shelters can be as loving as animals that you pay a couple thousand dollars for from a fancy breeder. Puppy mills are living hell. I've never had anything but domestic short hairs. I could never understand people that paid a fortune for, you know, for, for dogs and cats with pedigrees. I mean, but what do you get those in the shelters too? If somebody's they, looking for a pedigree dog, lots of them come up for various well, reasons. So, you know, the, you can get anything you want. With the recession, adoptable. unfortunately, you keep reading about people who can't afford That's right. to maintain their pets anymore, right. which just breaks my heart oh, when yeah. I hear that. I mean, I mean there, are breed, there are breed there groups we, out there that will, if you want a, a German Shepherd or you want a a golden retriever, or you want to be, Sean, you can go online today and find organizations that have them for mm. adoption. Wow. So you don't have to, no matter what the breed is, there's no reason that and you can't there, adopt. There are private rescues for, uh, there's a Labrador rescue very near here. There's a German Shepherd rescue. Mm. Well, you, today with the internet, it's amazing. Golden it was a lot different than when you and I went to high school together. Today you could sit in your home, wherever you want, Get that little computer, big, it doesn't matter, the computer. Google, uh, you live in Detroit, you live in Texas, you live in Philadelphia. How close is a German Shepherd rescue? You'll find one within 100 miles, maybe two miles of every big city. So there are breed rescues. Shelters get in at least 25, 40% of the dogs are purebred dogs because people get rid of them for the same reasons. And most of the reasons are reasons that any animal lover would never get rid of it. The animal gets old, the animal shed a little bit, it jumped on my aunt once, didn't hurt her, just jumped to say hello, wanted to kiss her. <laughs> I mean, and a lot of people, unfortunately, don't tell the true reason they're getting rid of it. And the shelter industry is a horrible industry the last couple of years, especially because the economy stunk. It's the last place for money to go. People are tightening up for the last five, six years. And I, I still now work with all the shelters in the area. Oh, Judy, yes. I think your husband was honored by the Delaware County SPCA a few months ago, yes, is that right? right? For the number of animals that were adopted. That, because we partner not only <coughs> with ACT, but with Delco. And they bring the Delaware old, County, Delaware County no, SPCA is, is uh, uh, a no-kill shelter now. They don't, uh, That's wonderful. they don't have the animal control contract that they used to have. So at the SPCA, when a cat comes in, they try to keep it unless it's sick or injured uh, until it's adopted. So the cats that we take from them are usually the older ones. We have one room with kittens and one room with older ones, and we've been adopting out the cats for them. Last week we adopted Sienna and Nathan. Both of them were full-grown cats, and um, they honored Buzz for that very reason, for the fact that we partner with them, and when they come into the store, they don't leave until they go out with a new owner. We in, don't send them back. In his thank you speech, yes. did he remember to thank his wife? Well, they, they had me come, too, because, you know, they oh, realized okay. that <laughs> Kitty, Palooza, Kitty, Kitty Palooza is near and dear to my heart because I've always been a cat person. Um, and also, growing up, I have to mention, um, I grew up in South Philadelphia. 
Pit bulls were the dog of choice when I was growing up. They were called a nanny dog. Everybody had one. The dogs used to meet you at school. They didn't have leashes. They were the most loving dogs. And the reason that dog fighters choose to use pit bulls is not because they're so vicious. They're human friendly. When they're in the middle of a fight and they want to break them apart, they will never go after their owner. They're very, very devoted. And unfortunately, that devotion forces <coughs> them to do what they don't want to do, which is they're forced to fight. Given a dog, most of them that they train to fight Ooh. aren't good enough, and they throw them in as bait dogs. Only certain dogs make it to be fighters, champs. The average dog doesn't want to fight. Mm. And, you know, let's face it, when Michael Vick was arrested years ago, it was because of the dogs that didn't make it to be the champion fighters that they, they put down. Disposed of. They disposed of. So yes. when you look at a pit bull, and we see the ones that are in loving homes, we see the ones that languish in foster care until they're adopted. We see all the happy endings, and we see some of the sad things that happen. Well, the but happiest they're wonderful ending, dogs. Buzzy, is your daughter, right? Yes. Yep. Tell us. Well, what happened was we were at a Michael Vick protest at the SPCA when he played his first preseason game for the Eagles, and a dog came over, more to Judy than me, because I was running around with a group from Utah that was there I do work with, and the dog was emaciated. She put her head on Judy's lap. We subsequently found out she was a bait dog. Her ears were cut with like scissors. They were half an ear. She was this thick. I mean, she was like a broomstick, but she was full of love. So Judy's daughter had been afraid of dogs her whole life because Judy's son, when he was three or five, he got bit real badly in the face by a dog. So Ooh. neither one were really dog people, and the daughter especially. And I mean, Judy and I have been together 20, 25 years. I've always had at least two, three dogs, and yet her daughter really wasn't that close, never wanted to get close to the dogs. But her daughter, who was somebody, she rescued cats. They had four cats in the house, three, four, five, depending on the time and the year, but they really never wanted to get through dogs. She talk, started on her daughter's husband, and he had a dog when he was a kid, so he warmed up. Then they worked on the daughter, and now you could probably give them a million dollars. They wouldn't give you the dog for a day, let alone <laughs> sell it to you. That dog goes everywhere with them 24-7. They work on top of each other in a building in Norbeth with two different businesses. That dog goes to work. It goes between the two offices every day. They go on vacation. The dog goes dog with goes them. on vacation well, We have to give them. a plug. Uh, my daughter Jackie owns Character Development, which is the toy and bookstore in the heart of Norbeth. So Katie is, you know, at work. She's the mayor of Norbert. Everyone knows her. When you go over to What's the What's the dog's name? Her name is Katie. Katie. The dog's name is Katie. Katie, yes. <laughs> After Kate Hepburn. My son-in-law always oh. loved Kate Hepburn. Wait, I have to hold up this. Can we get a close-up of the Kitty Palooza flyer for February 23rd at Buzzy's Bow Wow Meow in Norbert on Montgomery Avenue at Meeting House Road? It's a wonderful experience. It really is. And maybe you'll get lucky the way my husband and I did. It's a great Valentine's gift for someone yes. who wants to give the very best love that you could give. You know, what better holiday than Valentine's Day to give someone love? That's and boy, right. when you give someone a cat, they're going to get a lot of love. A lot of love. A lot of hugs and kisses and licks. You and, get the same yeah. thing with a dog. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I'm outnumbered by two women oh, and two no, no, cats. No, 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 no. We're not out. We're not, I love all animals. I, I just never say, owned a dog. Well, dogs are a lot Kitty more Palooza is yeah. kitties, you know, that day. And the best part about Kitty Palooza is we always encourage a pal for the kitty. So the first one is either $40 for a kitten, which is really very inexpensive. That includes the spay neuter. That includes their initial inoculations and a microchip in their little ear. And if they adopt one, we have the buddy that it doesn't cost anything. So the second cat is free of charge, no fee. Uh, it's $40 for a kitten under six months. If you adopt any kitten that's six months or older, it's only $20 for the two of them. So you're basically getting a terrific deal. If you and to you a can write a check for a little... A little extra Absolutely. because that goes to goes support. To support it either all goes to, it either goes to, yeah. Well, no, that money goes directly to the shelter that we're doing it. If they give us any extra money for PAC, that would be wonderful. Also, give money for Absolutely. PAC. Absolutely. PAC Absolutely. is totally dependent on donations. And, 100 percent. You know, if we get the lovely opportunity to come back again, I could fill half hours another half over hour and over uh, well, with all the work we do, do for PAC. But I want to clarify two things. The advantage above everything else with fostering is you have one or two, most three animals in a home for at least a month, 
the months before that animal is adopted by a Bonnie. That family or that single person gets to know that animal. No criticism whatsoever of shelters, rescues, SPCAs. You don't have that continual 24-hour-a-day interaction because you're in a facility right. uh, that's got bars there and at night no one's there and so on. You really get to know the plus and minuses, whether it's a foster dog or a foster cat. That's one advantage. The other advantage coming to Kitty Palooza or coming to the store even to adopt dogs, which we often have on weekends because dogs can't be left alone like cats and overnight and so on, is that our people in the store, and maybe we're just total idiots, we actually pay as part of their salary them to take the hours that in other stores I don't want to name, they would be selling products. Our people in the store actually clean out the cat room. They're not in cages, the ones that are there seven days a week. If someone comes in, a mother and a child, or a woman, single, or husband, no children, says, can I see that cat? Our people will, during the working day, instead of selling a product to another customer, go over to the, uh, our two cat rooms, open the door, spend 15 minutes, an hour, with that person trying to subtly have them adopt the cat because the people that work first believe in what we're doing. They still the, get... Your staff people are very knowledgeable. They're just wonderful. I, I wish we had more time, but I think we've already run out of time. So our guests today have been Buzzy Miller, his wife Judy Goldstein, and please go to Buzzy's Bow Wow Meow, February 23rd, the next Kitty Palooza. Or any day. Or any we day. We have them every day of the week. Every day of the week. Or look up www.packforanimals.org because we didn't get a chance to talk about military foster program. We'll do that next time. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, and we'll see everybody next week.